Hello and welcome back to Movie Recap Factory. Today we'll talk about an action-adventure movie from 2021 titled The Little Things. Without further ado, let's get started. It is the year 1990. A girl is driving in a car going down the road with some great 90s album song, but panics as a strange car follows her. The same car stays beside hers for a few minutes before overtaking. The girl starts to be cautious and notices the car stopping a few meters away, but decides to accelerate her car as quickly as possible to avoid any contact with the stranger. She pulls over to a gas station nearby, in a great hurry. Being paranoid, she hastily gets out of the car and tries to open the store door. She bangs every entrance and window, but all seem to go in vain. She tries with all her might while weeping her tears. Meanwhile, the stranger pulls over, opens up his trunk, and wears his accessories for a serial killer, black gloves and some tools to finish the target. In the meantime, the girl hides away in the field nearby, and the serial killer starts to move and follow her movements leisurely as if the target would not get out of his hand. The girl hides behind a bunch of bushes. While the killer is searching for her through his flash, another tool from his arsenal, she decides to intercept the semi-truck on the nearby road. She comes in front of the truck before going down to her knees, stopping the vehicle. The following morning opens at the same place with Joe Deacon investigating the crime scene. He looks around the area and talks to the shop owner, who reveals that this is the fourth murder in the town of Bakersfield. Joe Deacon is a former LA cop who now resides and works in Bakersfield as a sheriff, living away and alone on the city's outskirts. He reaches the station where he is asked to visit LA. Deacon collects the bloodstained boots, which are evidence for a case. Although, when he reaches the forensic unit, he is not given the evidence as authorization from homicide is needed. The evidence is again locked in and under retesting. He comes out only to find his car about to be towed away by the new detective Jim, because the former cops were blocking his car. Joe unhooks his car and gets going. He visits the station in LA, where he meets his old colleagues who appreciate Jim. Meanwhile, Jim talks to the press and tells them they are working 24-7, all hands on deck approach to this case. Joe reaches there to bring the image down by disclosing it to one journalist since even after four victims, the police did not have a single suspect. Eventually, Jim and Joe meet in a nearby restaurant where Jim is informed of another case and has to leave. Before leaving, he offers Joe to come with him. Riding over with the new detective Jim, they reach an apartment building covering the crime scene. They see the lady with multiple stab wounds over her body. Deke starts the investigation in a style and reaches the apartment across the building. Once he enters that room, he can see a clear view of the crime scene and the girl. He recalls the same scene as related to the other cases. They get out of the crime scene and get separated after Jim drops off Deke. Before leaving, Jim invites Deke for breakfast the next day. Deke leaves in his car and has dinner in one of the burger stores. Later at night, a couple jogs around. After some time, a shady car silently chases the girl when they're on different paths. The next day, when the detective and the former cop meet up, Jim sees a poster for a missing woman. After exchanging a few words with Deke, who was about to leave the city, Jim asks him to see something. Jim found the peeper and the pervert, who may be responsible for the recent case. Jim tries to interrogate him while Deke is behind the mirror. Deke asks Jim to ask him about Mary Roberts, to which the suspect gets up and stares at the mirror. In the end, Deke leaves. On the freeway, he sees a trio of girls giggling around in the car and smiles at them. He returns to meet the post-mortem lead officer, Flo. After asking for a few things about the recent case, he asks for a favor to pull up a file of the Up North case. The officer agrees but does not guarantee any safety, and setbacks the bear alone. She leaves. Suddenly, he starts talking to the corpse, explaining and deciphering the real situation. Later, both the officers, Deke and Flo, have their dinner and she gives him the key to the apartment room where the girl lived. He scouts it and is interrupted by the landlady who tells him to close by when he is done. He rents a room in St. Agnes Hotel with green lights all over the room. He places his files and photos and starts studying them. However, he starts hallucinating the victims who were murdered and closes off with the statement that it's never over. While Jim is being advised by his director not to be on the same path as Deke as he lost his family and health due to his overindulgence in the case, Deke continues his investigation. He reaches several repair stores and demands an employee list and orders received. The next thing Jim does is visit the parents of the new missing case and finds a lead, a red beret, and promises to find her. Another victim surfaces up near the lake. Another case of serial killing putting on more weight upon the detective. Deke shares the list obtained and tells Jim to check out the names on the list. 
Jim suddenly brings the breakfast he owes Deke and invites him to his house the next day. Deke is mesmerized by his family, as he once had his own the very same, with a lovely wife and two daughters. After breakfast, he moves on towards his divorced wife's home and exchanges a few glances and words with her before asking for their daughter. His ex-wife tells him to call up his daughter, and he agrees while having something in his mind. Going through the victim's files in the office, Jim decides to meet with Deke in a club. He asks Deke a few questions related to the case, which is five years old. In a suspenseful manner, leaving the last question, they drive off and take a halt on a bridge. Deke starts answering Jim's questions by explaining the past investigation related to the whole case that he has been working on. Walking down a place which was a crime scene five years ago, Deke explains all that he could. After reminiscing the past, they go back. While dropping Jim off, he stresses that the little things are often the cause of being caught. Moving on forward, he stops by the place where Albert Sparma stays at. He checks the car in the parking lot, flashing the insides. And then Albert comes down with his garbage bag to dump while conversing with Deke about the car for sale. Deke shows as if he is going on from here, but as Albert throws off his trash, he quickly picks it up, revs his engine, and inspects the internals of the trash inside his hotel room in St. Agnes. Eventually, he picks up all the suspected evidence and reaches his friend, Flo, in forensics. The next day, he decides to tail Albert Spalma for the whole day and follows him wherever he goes using the vehicle Spalma gives out for sale. He sets out for him on a freeway, where Albert decides to play hide and seek with Deke. After a while of the Sparma and Deacon show, Albert pulls over to Deke's side and asks for the trunk space. Deacon calls Jim for a few answers, and Jim's people with Deke take off for Albert. They reach the door, and as they are getting ready to slam the door, Albert opens up the door, asking if they are ready to go. While Albert is being moved to the interrogation cell, Jim talks to one of the witnesses to the killings. In between the interrogation, Albert invokes his Fifth Amendment of the US Constitution, but chuckles as if he was kidding. Although he knows it doesn't matter if he doesn't speak, there are other ways too. Like a lunatic, Albert enjoys all the interrogation as if it were a game to him. When an envelope is thrown at him, he shows hesitance but opens it up and speaks out about the off contrast in the pictures of the victims. Everything that way sharpening during the interrogation excites him and gives him a thrilling experience. Nothing comes out of the thorough interrogation as the captain reveals that Albert was accused of murder eight years before this and he moved to the cops. He is a self-buff crime suspect. Not getting anything from Albert, he moves to St. Agnes to meet Deke. As he enters the room, he sees the pictures of three girls, asking Deke what the heck is going on and suggesting that he needs a doctor. However, Deke convinces him that all he needs is a chance to get into Albert's room to collect the evidence, and they will be done with this case. Jim distracts Albert and calls him to a bar nearby, while Deke investigates the room but cannot find a clue. Moreover, Albert convinces Jim to accompany him to a desert. He also promises to lead Jim to the body of one of the victims, Rhonda Rathbun, with a red beret. They go to the desert, and Albert makes Jim dig the grave while taunting him. Eventually, Sparma brings out the topic of Baxter's family. He says that if he could not protect the girls, how is he supposed to protect his two daughters? Baxter comes in full aggression, snaps, and hits him with the shovel, killing him. Deke, on the other hand, tries to find the Baxter and Sparma. He sees Sparma's body lying on the ground and flashes through his past, where he made the same mistake. While the team was searching for the missing girl, Deke was thrown into some brain conflict. As one of the team members called for him, he snapped out of it and heard someone running. Without confirming who it was, he shot the person dead. Upon reaching there, they discovered that Deke had shot the third girl they were looking for. He shot the girl straight through her chest. Now coming back from the reminiscing past and realizing that Jim has killed Sparma, Deke turns on his cover mode and directs Baxter to dig a grave for Albert's body. To complete the cover-up of the accidental murder, he gives all the possessions of Sparma's to a random guy with his car. Later, Deke tells Jim to forget everything related to Sparma and what happened in this course of time. The reason Deke and gave up was being haunted by their spirits, as we have seen previously in the movie when the spirits of the three girls are haunting Deke. He then states, it's the little things that get you caught. Later, Baxter is seen at home staring off nowhere. He gets a package from Deke containing a red beret that, upon recalling, could have belonged to the girl Rathla. Another flashback appears, where two officers help Deke cover up his crime. The officer puts the death of the third woman as being stabbed to death instead of killed from a gunshot. Meanwhile, Joe Deacon burns all of Sparma's belongings, and then an extreme close-up of the package of berets, missing the red one. And the movie ends there. 
Tell us what you like the most about this film in the comments below. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on the notifications so you don't miss the next video. Thanks and see you in the next one.